Welcome to Ask the Experts North Texas here on News Radio 1080 KRLD. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Rankin. And I'm Kristen Diaz. We have been keeping up with what has been happening with the high speed bullet train and the development of it between Dallas and Houston. Recently, the Texas Supreme Court uh, ruling that the um, private company that's building it, it does have authority to use eminent domain. We have just a lot of updates on this ongoing pro- project. And James Legate, online news editor, uh, joins us this uh, afternoon. And what can you give us? What's the latest headline, I guess, for this? Because it, it, we've heard about, obviously, the um, the top management left. And there was a bit of a scramble there on what was going to be the future of the project. That's right. So last month, the CEO of the company, Texas Central, announced that he was leaving. And I also found out that the company's entire board of directors had disbanded as well. But um, despite that, that's currently being managed by a man named Michael Bui. He's a consultant with a company called FTI. uh, And he works with He's, well, he's worked with companies that have been going through bankruptcy and things like that. So that caused a lot of speculation that Texas Central might be uh, not in a good place. But since this uh, Supreme Court ruling came down, uh, it's cleared them to acquire the rest of the land they need for the project. Uh, they say that they're going to continue going ahead and uh, they're looking for more investors and working on getting this built. There's been so much talk about somehow getting a high-speed rail to get between Dallas and Houston uh, for decades now. And what has been the holdup to to slow the progress of this whole project? Well, it's it's hard to build a high-speed rail line. Uh, it needs a lot of different approvals from the government. And it's also, this is a very high cost project, something between 20 and $30 billion is the latest estimates. Uh, in this case also, this court case was going on for years. Uh, and so they really could not continue. They needed the land and uh, they could not get that land until this was resolved in their favor. I'm curious about that. So this has been not public, publicly funded. This has been privately funded but why are they allowed then to have, um, how was it that that decision was made in their favor? Yeah, this is uh, kind of the key piece of this court case is a sort of chicken or the egg question of whether or not they count as a railroad company since they don't have a railroad yet. Uh, this has gone through, uh, initially a judge had ruled with, in favor of the landowners and said that they don't have any sort of railroad. They're not a railroad company. Uh, that was appealed, and then a, an appeals court ruled in favor of Texas Central and said that actually, under the state transportation code, they do count as uh, what I think is called an interurban electric railway company, uh, which does uh, have do- eminent domain authority. Um, and then it appealed again, went to the Supreme Court, where they decided that, yes, that's correct. Uh, so they do have that power. When you're talking about 250, 300 miles between Dallas and Houston, how much of this high-speed rail would be on existing tracks that are between Dallas and Houston right now? I think the plan is to just build a completely new rail line. Uh, it would connect up to Amtrak's national network, but uh, basically this would be its own thing. Um, they need, uh, I think about half of it would need to be built on viaducts is what they said, So, which also adds a lot to the cost. Has, have there been any other discussions now on what possible timeline uh, for this project could look like now that this ruling has gone through? They have not said that yet. Uh, Texas Central is still being pretty quiet about where exactly they are in this process. Uh, they'll still need uh, approval from the Surface Transportation Board, which is a federal agency. So it's it's still probably at least a few years off. So the Texas landowners between Dallas and Houston They've exhausted all their appeals and this project can move forward when it when they choose to move forward. Well, they I spoke to one of the lawyers for the landowners and he said that they are still hoping to fight the project in different venues. Uh, look, 
I mentioned with the Surface Transportation Board. They're hoping to challenge any approval there. He also mentioned the possibility of a federal lawsuit challenging the um, environmental impact statement, which is a government report on the project, uh, which sort of cleared it to go ahead with a route that they said would have the minimal impact. Is there still a financial obligation that needs to be met uh, before they can continue on with this project? It's not totally clear how much money they have. Uh, one of the things that the opponents of the project tried to show in court was that the company's finances are not anywhere near sufficient to, to build this. Um, but they could be. Uh, it's it's there, you know, because it's privately funded, there's no way to really know for sure other than what they tell us. Um, one of the, um, the, the things that caused some uh, speculation about their finances was last fall, the then CEO had gone on a podcast and said that they might need to borrow, I think, something like $12 billion through a program funded by the Infrastructure and Investment Act. Uh, obviously, uh, that's a pretty substantial amount uh, if they need that much, but also with the estimated cost at you know 20 plus billion dollars, it sounds like they could also have a good chunk of change already. As the time has gone by, there have been other technologies that have come out that promise to be to provide high speed delivery of people and products between uh, cities that are way far apart. I'm thinking of, say, for example, Elon Musk's boring company, and also I think uh, Jeff Bezos has something in mind as well to, to do that. Are we getting to the point where the high-speed rail may just be too almost old-fashioned to, to do anything, to make any money, to, to provide this kind of transportation? It's hard to say, you know, at this point, things like a hyperloop are still really in development. Um, so it's really hard to say how soon something like that could be built. Uh, whereas with a high speed rail, at least it is a proven technology in use in other parts of the world, at least. Uh, in fact, Texas Central had said it was working with a Japanese company that builds high speed trains. So they at least have an idea of uh, what they'd be running. With this um, ruling from in eminent domain, does that also change the routes that, you know, or the way that they would have navigated from city to city? Well, it means they can take uh, pretty much as direct a route as they want. Uh, if they hadn't won this case, it would have been a big hurdle for the project. They would have had a much weaker bargaining position when they were going to landowners. They would have needed the landowners to say, yes, I will sell. And that could have also caused them to take a less direct route and that could have increased construction costs as well as the land acquisition costs. How does something like this affect other possible routes for high-speed rail um, between Texas cities or even cities around the country? That's a good question. Um, it's hard to say really. <laughs> uh, at this point, it's Building a high-speed rail line in the U.S. has uh, proven to be a difficult thing. Um, it, it's a long process. Uh, there's a lot of challenges to it. Obviously, you have people like the landowners in this case who don't want to give up their land. Um, and then just also there are a lot of necessary approvals for something like that to be built. Seems like there are still a lot of unknowns with, uh, you know, it, hopefully these companies still have the gumption to, to follow through with their project. They've gone through a lot of hurdles so far, and that could be taxing and exhausting on anyone. Uh, but it will be very interesting to continue to see how this project unfolds. Uh, James Legate with Engineering News Record, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on.